Here we go again, I'm doing another request. And this is a very intriguing question. Push, pull and single ended topologies. Can I convert one to the other? So can a push pull amplifier be converted to a single ended or can I modify a single ended so it becomes a push pull? Uh, the short answer is uh, no. <laughs> Uh, there is a longer answer to it and uh, that if you do a lot of painstaking uh, modifications and you take out a bunch of parts and put in a bunch of parts, then you can do it. But uh, almost in every single case, uh, your job is much easier if you start building an amp from scratch rather than just modify an amp because that amp will look like nothing it looked before you will need different number of parts in it different size parts different kinds of parts and uh, different numbers of stages and uh, why is that so let's have a, a look at what is the difference between single ended and push pull so basically for single-ended amplification uh, you what we use is that let's let's just draw a, a simplified uh, single-ended amplifier let's make it a two-stage triode amplifier so here oops i need to put on a pointer let's see pointer option pan perfect so now here is our input so so we have our uh, our uh, RCA jack here negative and the positive so the negative goes to the ground and uh, and the positive will go to the grid so this is the grid of your tube this is the cathode of the tube and let's just put a resistor here to ground that's the cathode resistor and we have the plate of the tube and we have a plate resistor and the plate resistor is uh, the voltage of that is stabilized by a capacitor and then uh, up, that is separated by your resistor from your power stage and there you will have the output transformer and that's hooked up to the plate of your power tube. Here's the grid of your power tube, the cathode and your cathode bias resistor. And uh, here's the power supply. I will not draw it. Let's just say that this is the B plus. We call the high voltage B plus. And here this is the ground. So if you want to follow the signal path, we take the signal from... Oh, uh, what is this doing? So we take it from here, we are not making connection there, then we have to insert a capacitor here and it goes to the grid and here we have to put a resistor to ground and that's your grid resistor. We have to do the same thing with your input tube too. So here is the resistor that goes to ground and, and the value of that resistor is the input impedance of your amplifier. So let's say you put here a 100 kilo ohm resistor, a 100k resistor, then the input impedance is 100k. So what does this mean here? What do we have here? So basically for uh, this is the single ended thing scenario and here we have two vacuum tubes. Uh, so maybe let's say we have a 12AX7, one section, one half of a 12AX7, and for the power tube, let's say we have an EL84, but we are connecting it in triode mode. Obviously, EL84 is a pentode, but it can be triode strapped. So now I did not put on those extra electrodes, but maybe let's now put that in just for propriety's sake. So this is grid 2 or the screen grid, and basically we can hook that up either if we hook it up here right to the plate then it runs in a triode mode if we hook it up instead to the power supply bypassing the output transformer then it's in a pentode mode and if we hook it up into the middle of the 
uh, output transformer that's in an ultra linear mode. So basically, that's how your pentode is, uh, can be run, depending on where you uh, attach your screen grid. It becomes a triode, ultra linear mode, or pentode mode. So in this case, let's just stick with the triode mode. And let's see what are the crucial features here that make it a single-ended design. So the feature is that here you have your input signal coming in and your input signal if, if uh, will move the voltage on the plate higher or lower, higher, lower. So if the voltage on the plate moves higher, then that will move the voltage on the second tube lower so so they they will go in opposite direction do, 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 do. so if your signal here moves the voltage higher then the plate goes lower if the plate goes lower this plate goes higher so basically it, it's almost like making waves in a swimming pool right so if you push down the water here then the water will just rise up and it will be like we are making waves basically and with each stage the waves are getting bigger and bigger and bigger so basically that's what your single-ended amp does it it receives a wave and makes the wave bigger and and here uh and and to make the wave bigger you need one amplification device for each stage uh, in the push-pull version, you will, we will see in a minute that we need two amplification devices per stage. So basically there we will have the same thing as we have here, but it is mirrored. And uh, I will go into that a little bit later. We have one more thing to, uh, to look at here is that there is there are two critical features that you need in a si single ended amp that is unique to a single ended amp and it's not present in a push pull amp so one of that is the output transformer so basically what makes an amp a single ended amp is that we have the output transformer and let's say this is the primary coil of the output transformer so it means that a primary coil of your output transformer is that wire where the high voltage is connected to from your power supply. And here it says like push-pull and it says single-ended. So I will draw two coils here. This will be the single-ended coil and that will be the push-pull coil. So now we started out with a single-ended design and it's single-ended because the electricity, the positive voltage is applied to one end of the coil and your vacuum tube, there's only one vacuum tube or uh, connected to the other end of the coil. So basically it's almost like having a weight hanging from a, from a spring and it's like boing boing goes up and down as the music signal makes it move. Of course your coil doesn't do anything like that, but the stored energy in the coil goes like boing 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 basically. So, so what happens that when your uh, music signal makes the plate voltage change, then the stored electricity, the stored voltage in the output transformer's coil will rise and it will fall to a great degree. And at the same time, this voltage here that's provided by your power supply, it stays more or less stable. If it can stay more stable, then you will have better dynamics, better base response, better micro detail. And uh, basically this is single-ended. So you have supply on one end of the coil and you have your motive force that's applied by your vacuum tube at the other. So push-pull is very different. So here we have, uh, uh, don't do that. So we have the voltage applied to the middle of the coil. And we have a tube here at one end 
and the tube here at the other end so instead of boing 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 like voltage going like that and 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 pulling the coil only on one side here we are boing boing boing, boing. so up and down so both ends of the coil the energy goes this way it's, it's like a push pull motion that's why it's push pull because here i'm pushing and here i'm pulling boing 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 um so actually it's I, i'm doing the wrong thing it's it's too late i'm i'm very tired i'm sorry so they actually go this way so when the voltage goes up in one then the voltage goes the so they just start going against each other uh anyway uh so so what's wait uh, anyway, I think uh, just a scratch that how I showed the voltages. I'm sorry, I'm a little bit tired and my imaginative powers are a little bit drained. But that's the thing that you have the two <clears throat> vacuum tube and when the energy rises at one end, the energy falls at the other end basically. And now just imagine <laughs> how the boing boing goes. It's anyway, so so. Uh, and because of that, you need vastly different output transformers. And a push-pull and output transformer cannot be converted to a single-ended output transformer uh, because uh, there's one thing that is key between the two, uh, and that thing is called the air gap. So what on earth is this air gap? Ay, ay, ay. So, so imagine that uh, when you have your transformer, then uh, this there is this vacuum tube, and the vacuum tube, even when there is no music signal going through, it draws always draws a quiet quiescent current. So basically, there's DC running through your output transformer's primary coil at all times. And because of that, it's going to magnetize your output transformer's core. So basically, it's taking away from the resources of that transformer. And, uh, and in a single-ended output transformer, uh, there is like a tremendous amount of current running. Let's say, in a, for example, you have a, a 300B vacuum tube. It's something like between 60 to 90 milliamps, depending on how your tube is biased up. Uh, that's how many milliamps of current are running constantly through, even if there's no music signal. So it means that that's going to saturate your output transformer a lot. How much? Uh, let's say, let's be talking about a Lunda transformer that is... Uh, uh, made for a 300B and uh, and this current it, it will saturate the core to 0 0.9 Tesla so that's how much uh, magnetization power it's, uh, it has and the, that leaves 0 0.7 Tesla for the music signal so uh, just imagine this that in a single ended amplifier you have less amount of energy available for your music signal than what your tube needs just to stay on. And uh, push-pull transformers and push-pull methodology was uh, invented to bypass this tremendous limitation because this means that uh, you need over twice as big transformer for a specific uh, power uh, output uh, because uh, let's say if you have like a 50 watt power output you will need like a 60 65 watt capacity extra in your output transformer just to fight the quiescent current uh, and and actually, the way these transformers, these single-ended output transformers, can handle that quiescent current, 
is that they are air-gapped. So it means that their magnetic circuits are not perfectly closed, that there is a little gap, and that means that the inductance of that uh, output transformer is going to drop significantly. And because of that, you will need a much higher coil number to keep up the inductance, because you want to keep up the inductance as without the inductance, you do not have low frequencies. So uh, as you go lower and lower in frequencies, the higher and higher inductance you need to have that output. So when you have a wimpy output transformer that has no base, that's because it doesn't have enough inductance to provide the base. So if you are looking for output transformers, look at uh, what is the inductance of the output transformer and you want to have uh, at least 8 Henry's per kilo ohm of your primary uh, uh, resistance. So if you have, for example, a, a transformer, let's say, that has a primary of uh, 5K, like a 5 kilo ohm primary, then it's like 5 times 8, you need 40 Henry's to have really, really strong and substantial base even at 20 Hertz or a little lower. And as you will see, most of the output transformers have not even half of that, maybe a quarter of that, and that's the reason why a lot of single-ended tube amplifiers are branded as having not enough base, and people say that, well, those amps cannot control the the base driver because they don't have good enough damping factor. No, they can't control the cone because the output transformer does not convert the low frequency energy properly. And, and that's the, your key design consideration as an engineer to have proper inductance for your output transformer. And however, as everyone realizes that in a very, very short span of time, is that having double the inductance means at least double the cost of that output transformer. And that's why when you have uh, like output transformers like Lunda, that's why they cost so much because they have sufficient uh, inductance. And that requires a uh, bigger magnetic core and more wire and and as you go up in size uh, you will ha have uh, more and more difficulties with winding your core because you are going to have greater issues with uh, uh, the interwinding capacitances and, and stuff like that so where did I start? Where do I want to go from here? So basically, we have seen that the output transformer is the most critical part of a single-ended tube amplifier, and it limits the base response so much if undersized for your application, and I would say 98% of the output transformers in uh, tube amplifiers you can buy are massively undersized uh, and that's why people started playing around with negative feedback to compensate for having a wimpy output transformer and that and they use that to artificially boost up the damping factor of your uh, tube amp However, if you had uh, good enough inductance, then you would not need such artificial tricks. It's kind of like trying to inject yourself with steroids. All it's going to give is basically a heart attack. I say uh, that there are different tastes and flavors, but uh, if you are an engineer who is worth your thought, you know that error correction was implemented that was uh, created at the first place and is being used to correct for errors that your circuitry makes. 
and our uh, prime directive is to limit those errors that our circuitry is making and then we depend less on error correction you can still use error correction if you want but it's kind of like uh, trying to correct uh, let's say if you are talking about a car it's much easier to fix if you have uh, like a, a misaligned uh, intake valve at cylinder 4 than trying to fix uh, a broken crankshaft. And, and that's what uh, a lot of um, designs want to achieve. It's basically like using error correction to fix a broken crankshaft situation. Because when you don't have enough inductance, that, that's kind of uh, that, that sort of scenario um, so going for push-pull uh, transformers uh, th this was a really ingenious invention so what they figured out is that if you hook up the high voltage to the center of the coil and and both of your tubes draw the same amount of current the same amount of current flows through two halves of the coil in opposite direction and they cancel their effects out because one half will magnetize the core in this direction the other one will magnetize the core in that direction and they cancel each other out isn't that ingenious and because of that there's not going to be a dc imbalance across the coil and everything is fine and dandy because you can use a much more compact output transformer because there's no DC imbalance. Well, wow. theoretically. In reality, there's always uh, some sort of DC imbalance. That's what happens when your tubes are not matched. So, so good transformer manufacturers, even for the push-pull iron, like Lunda usually specifies, five milliamps of current imbalance so so even they are they have a tiny air gap to make sure that if there's like a tiniest uh, like a really small imbalance your core doesn't saturate but you still have the power available uh, so what happens in a push-pull lamp when uh, you have unbalanced tubes? It means that this uh, imbalance current will be greater and greater and your output transformer will saturate, so you will lose low end response. So if your tubes are not biased properly, then you will see the base decline more and more. The better your output transformer is, the less effect this tube imbalance will have on it and uh, if you have a really nice uh, piece of gear like for example quicksilver amplifiers even if your tubes are quite grossly mismatched you still won't really notice uh, the effect in the sound of the amp um, so let's continue with the with the push pull saga so now we see that the output transformers are so vastly different that if you want to change from uh, single-handed to push-pull or the other way around, you need to buy a different output transformer. There is one interesting thing though, is that if you have a push-pull transformer, you can modify it to become a single-handed transformer. But that's extremely hard work and you have a very good chance of ruining your push-pull output transformer. It can be done, however, but that's not a beginner's job. And uh, even if you want to start out just by trying to save money, your first couple tries will be ruining your first couple push-pull transformers that you want to convert into single-handed. So it's a much, much better option just to buy a single-handed output transformer if you want to. However, as, as a rule, they are always much more expensive than push-pull transformers. Now, let's see. I hope I have another blackboard. Okay. Let's just scratch out this title. It doesn't apply for us now. 
and I think we are already at 24 minutes so so let's continue from here uh, so we have uh, had a look at what the signal section of a single-ended amplifier looks like and how the output transformers behave so at the next part we will explore what a push-pull amplifier's signal section looks like so please like and hit subscribe so others can like and subscribe thank you bye bye